So we are recording, excellent. So I'm gonna call this meeting of GOL to order, seeing the presence of quorum. It is 1031 on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, for those of you who uh, care about this, those things, um, of which I'm one actually, a member of the Klan. Um, so pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of GOL is being conducted by a remote participation. We are being recorded. And I'm going to just first make sure that everyone can be heard. Um, and so I'm going to start with Mandy. Present. And Darcy. Present. And Pat. Present. And Marlene, our guest. Present. Thank you. Um, we're still waiting on one uh, counselor, but we're going to begin the meeting since we have a quorum present. Um, and when she comes, um, we will acknowledge that and I will check to make sure that she can be heard. Um, you've had a chance, I hope, to look at the agenda. We don't have a huge number of items today, but we have some substantial ones. And so we're going to begin today with the proclamation. And then we're going to turn to the discussion item on council committees and their process. Um, I don't believe we're going to, item number four, I believe, has been dropped. Um, and item five is something that um, we really will spend hopefully a lot of time on today. We have a lot of work to do there. We have one set of minutes to look at. And uh, so that's the agenda. So the first item before us is a proclamation, 2021 Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month. Um, we have listed here, Mandy has put it up on the screen. Thank you, Mandy. Um, council sponsors are Alyssa Brewer, Lynn Griesemer, and Mandy Joe herself. And the resident sponsor who's present with us today is Marlene Musante, member of the board of the Children's Advocacy Center. Um, Marlene, at any point, if there's something that is wrong or that you would wish to correct, please just speak up. Um, you don't have to raise your hand. My screen at the moment uh, doesn't even show you. Now it does, thank you. Um, we, what we do basically is we simply go through it, uh, whereas by whereas, um, the, co the committee asks questions or makes suggestions and you as the sponsor are welcome to weigh in. Uh, the goal is to come up with a document we're all happy with. Um, we do not uh, discuss, generally speaking, the, the merits of the, the proclamation, um, though I think this one is pretty, pretty obvious. Um, but what we're focus, focused on is simply that it is clear, consistent, and actionable. So those are the kinds of things that we look at. And once we're done with it, it goes directly to the council. And Mandy, I don't know, you are no longer part of that process and Lynn is not here. Would you guess that this would go on the next um, council agenda or can we even say that uh, yet? Athena might know. Yes, we do have it on the draft agenda for Monday. We'll okay. be finalizing that later this afternoon. Okay, so Marlene, assuming this goes well and I'm sure it will, it would go directly to the council for a vote. Normally it's on the consent agenda. So it's not actually discussed or even read. Um, okay. So if you wish to be present, um, you certainly may. As a, 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 on Monday evening, and uh, we have um, a period for public comment, and you're certainly welcome to speak there if you, if you would like. Um, and you can also reach out to Lynn Griesemer if you have any questions about it. But normally what happens is a proclamation goes on the consent agenda, and that's passed without any fanfare, um, at, usually at the very beginning of the meeting. Okay. So um, if you wish to uh, say something publicly, um, your opportunity would be Monday night, and you might reach out to Lynn and uh, talk to her about how you'd like to do that. Um, okay. That's the process. Great, thank you. Okay, all right. So uh, first, uh, whereas April was first declared Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month by Presidential Proclamation 1985. Um, we strike the comma and put in a semicolon and Next, same thing, whereas the month of April is devoted to celebrating all the activities to transform communities into places that care about families and children, semicolon, and um, do we capitalize the C? I can't remember, Mandy. Whereas child abuse prevention? Yeah, I think it should all be um, capitalized, child abuse. And then- That's kind of like the in, title, okay. Yeah, and then we could put in awareness and prevention month. Okay, we could put the entire thing. So Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month. Or do no, that to... doesn't make any sense. Chair, yeah, Child think... Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month. Is a community no. responsibility yeah. and finding solutions depends on involvement among all right. people. I got you. Yeah, okay. I see where this changed. Okay, all right. 
committee's okay with that? I'm uncomfortable with the capitals, but that's so minor. I don't care. <laughs> I understand. I agree with you. I, I just... <laughs> so this it's, one would be lowercase then. Uh, communities must make every effort to promote. Yeah. Okay. Programs that benefit children and their families and. Okay. Oh, wait, this one repeats. Yes, there is a repeated, right. That yeah. error should be, should be struck. Yep. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Um, and then whereas uh, effective, that should be a low case E, effective child abuse prevention programs succeed because of partnerships among agencies, schools, religious organizations, law enforcement agencies, and the business community, semicolon and. Uh, last, whereas again, if people have a problem, just speak up. Whereas Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month is about connecting all of the above concepts so that solutions to child abuse may be achieved. I have a problem with the word concepts. Um, and I don't know if anybody else has any concerns about that, whereas. Yeah, basically. Um, it's not so much concepts, I guess, as just, you know, it's connecting all the dots or connecting all of these. Um, I don't know. Maybe it is fine. Any thoughts? Is it even needed? What's the, what's the, what's it trying to say? Notions, thoughts, perceptions. Now then maybe concepts is fine. Um, I just, what's the, is the point any importantly different from everything that's been said so far? We could just say connecting all of the above so that solutions to child abuse may be achieved. Okay, that's a possible. That, that's, that's just a suggestion. Again, these are suggestions, Marlene. You're free to. Uh, well, yeah, and on. I'm glad to be seeing this because this looks different than the last draft I saw. So I'm just sort of trying to catch up to to. Um, okay. What I last have. Okay, that's fine. Take your time. If, if there's something missing in the draft you have right you like in it let us know we'll type it in okay yeah i think there is and i'm just not sure what happened to it so i just need okay. i need to like just look at everything I guess. Uh, that's okay if you don't mind take your time take your time and with share screen operative i'm not able to get to my desktop apparently is that true it seems to be the case you can Okay, well, now we're dealing with my stupidity. Um, you, you just have to un, you, just not do a full screen. Okay, that's the problem. Have that option up the Got top. It. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you, Mandy, thank you. Um, I want to share with you a comment that was made while Marlene is looking at her notes. Um, we got, I got an email from Councilor Brewer, one of the sponsors, and um, I can put this up on our screen if we wish, just to see it. I um, think we should wait until Marlene's had a chance to see this because she's using the screen. <laughs> oh, so sorry. I know. No, if you start her screen, George, she'll lose her comparing screens. <laughs> that's fine. That's and I, right. I, I don't suppose I can freeze the screen for a minute. No, no, take it. It's okay. I'm, I'm, uh, it's all right. Take your time. And I think Councillor okay. Brewer's comments were similar to the ones I've got down here on the now therefore, so. Okay, good. Then it may, it may prove moot. Um, okay, so then it's resolved. Okay, things just got moved around a little bit and the wording's a little bit different, but I think it's it all makes sense to me if it makes sense to you all. Okay. Do you yeah. wanna change anything? Yeah, no, I can understand okay. why it was re, I think Jennifer reorganized a few things after uh, mm -hmm. we spoke mm -hmm. um, and a little bit of the wording is just slightly different, but I think it's, it's, it's good. So I think- uh, okay. Okay. And you're happy with the order? In other words, sometimes there's a kind of progression with the whereases. These seem, um, there does seem to be somewhat of a progression here. So I think it's right. fine, but okay. Mm -hmm. All, right. Mm -hmm. All right, then the now therefore, um, I think Mandy has made some suggestions here. That's why we have this, uh, the uh, 
track changes? I, I would actually like to ask Marlene if possible. Please mm -hmm. go ahead. Um, where the flag raising is, and is it a special flag? Um, and it will. Do you hope to have it sort of on the town flagpole? Yes. Um, so there will be a, a few flags um, flown for the month of April. One will be um, in Northampton at the police station. One will be at East Hampton Town Hall, and then hopefully in Amherst at in front of the town hall. Um, so I will be delivering, if all goes well, a flag to the DBW um, so that they can raise it. It's a beautiful um, flag that we've had made up with children um, on it. Um, it uh, yes. So what was, did I not answer something? That that did. So I think you know when when oh. we do these flags, we yeah. normally use some wording that I put in the comments. And we could choose the whole month instead of just a day. Uh, yes, that would be great. That's what we're hoping for. Like as long as, because it is for the whole month and we, we're going. So just to back up a little bit, um, the kickoff for this is on April 1st and there's going to be a, a luminary um, event in Northampton, which will be publicized. I don't know, I'm trying to get it onto the town website, but I don't know if it's there or not because I'm having a hard time accessing it. But, <laughs> or finding the right place where I will find that information. Anyways, um, so at 5 p.m. on April 1st, there'll be an event um, in front of Look Park where they'll be lighting luminaries over 2,000 to represent the number oh. of kids that have been serviced through the CAC. Um, and then, um, so there on April 1st, also Northampton is raising their flag for the month. And then we're hoping to do the same thing in Amherst on the 9th, I mean, on the 6th, and then East Hampton on the 9th. So that we're spreading them out because we want um, Dave Sullivan, the DA, to be able to be at each flag raising along with the director of the CAC program. Um, so we're trying to space out the flag raisings, but then that they'll be raised for the whole month or as long as they can be in each town. So maybe, Mandy, if we just change April 1 to April 6, if we look at her wording that is in the margin there in the comments section, she's suggesting, and Marlene, why don't you look at it as well, that we the wording we normally use is according to, is further recognize this proclamation by hoisting the child abuse prevention flag from April 6, 2021 to April 30, 2021 to help cultivate awareness for all residents of Amherst. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Do you that, put time yeah. for the flag raising ceremony? Um, 9 a.m. Okay. Do we want to put that in, George? Well, let's think for a second. This is a actual physical flag raising, and it will be recorded apparently and made available virtually. But we're not, we're really not encouraging people to come <laughs> physically yet, I think. Right. Uh, the okay. Tibet Day was an exception because it was a political event and was not subject to the governor's, uh, the, the limits, the state limits on public gatherings. This would seem not to fall into that category. So um, I'm wondering if the time is really relevant. It's just the date that matters. But, and so my, I have a question. So how um, it proceeds with the um, being taped and all, will the proclamation be read at the flag raising or will that happen at a separate time and just be recorded? In the so, past, it's been read, yeah, Mandy? Yeah, so the sponsors normally try to, at least one sponsor and all, if, if you would like us to read it there, we will try to be there in person. I can't obviously speak for everyone else. Let me look at my own calendar. You yeah. said 9 a.m. on the 6th. Mm -hmm. um, that would be wonderful. And then, yeah. therefore, I don't think you need to put the time in because we'll be live doing it, reading it. Mm-hmm. So April 6th is a, is a Tuesday morning. It's a Tuesday morning. Yep. So I'm sure that there will be a counselor present, hopefully one of the sponsors, and we would read it at the event. Right. Um, we, okay. and, and my understanding, sorry to interrupt from speaking with Jennifer, is that we could have Dave Sullivan, um, the director of the program, myself, and hopefully Scott Livingstone there and then maybe a reporter just in the background taking 
a few pictures because we mm -hmm. do want to publicize this eventually in, in the newspaper so that we just spread awareness as well that way. Great. If that yeah. makes sense to you folks. Makes a lot of sense. Okay. Know, the point as you see it clearly is to get the word out and the flag will help, but this will even help more. Yeah, great. Any other comments or concerns from the committee about this document? All right, seeing none, I'm prepared to entertain a motion to declare the 2021 Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month proclamation to be clear, consistent, and actionable. I'll second yeah. that. All right, so I will make the motion and Mandy will second it. And I'm going to proceed then uh, directly to vote and I'm going to start with Mandy. Um, aye. And Pat? Aye. And Darcy? Yes. And the chair is also a yes. And I believe we still have one absence. So the vote is four uh, in favor, none against, and one counselor absent. All right, um, Marlene, thank you very much for being here. Um, yes, nice. Thank you for your, your help in, on this. And um, it's nice to see all you virtually. <laughs> right, exactly. And I see some of us in person on, on, on that day in April, on April 6th. And again, as I said, if you do wish to get any further I uh, contact or information about this before the council, you should okay. reach out to Lynn. Yep, I wrote that down. Okay, Great. thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, item number two on our schedule is a request that we uh, continue our discussion about a single process for making recommendations to the council for appointments to council appointed bodies. And what I asked you to do was to look at the CRC memo that had been sent many, many months ago. Um, we also put a number of documents in the uh, folder that um, spell out the individual GOL and uh, CRC policies, also the old OCA policy is in there. Um, and also the town manager's appointment handbook is also there. Um, so, um, I guess I'm looking for guidance here as to how you wish to proceed. Um, we could start with the CRC memo or, and we have the uh, present, the current chair of CRC and most likely the author of that memo. Um, and she could certainly speak briefly as to um, what lay behind it. Or if you feel you already have a pretty gra good grasp of that, we can go directly to the concerns. And there is silence. Realize the chair did not bring this. It was brought by other members of my committee. So I'm looking for your input because I don't have a problem with the situation as it exists. So I need help from people who do. Darcy? Um, the memo that's in the packet um, that lists all the different um, takes on the term limits mm -hmm. it, that's a new memo right is that something new no, that you... the, the, the one that uh, is in the memo from crc the memo from crc is old it, it goes last year i think it was october of last year okay it's been around for a long time and it lists the the different processes of oca and gol and crc and the town manager okay so and it's um, focused on term limits. Is that fair to say, Mandy, that the key issue from your perspective was term limits, that there was a difference in, and there is a difference between how those two committees view term limits. And uh, the suggestion was that this committee might at some point discuss that and see whether it felt it had a recommendation to make to the council about that. George, I don't know if Darcy was done speaking. Sorry, Darcy, go ahead. I, I could be yeah, wrong, I, but... I, I was, um, I felt like that was, that memo really kind of laid out um, the, the differences and the similarities of the different procedures that have been uh, developed since we started. And also, you know, the town manager pr process that has been in effect for a really long time. Um, and I guess I, 
I, I am very much interested in having a unified townwide policy on um, around, especially around term limits, but I'd like it on other things too. But term limits, if that's what we're focusing on to start with, um, is it makes uh, really a whole lot of sense to me to, to have a little balancing act with term limits where we have an outside number of years that we, where we would want to switch over to new blood to allow um, other, you know, fresh faces to be involved, but we also want to balance that with um, the the need for experience and the need for to keep on people that have put in the time to gain the knowledge um, to be able to effectively work on these committees. So, I mean, I think that's what it was all about: is that the preference for the preference for reappointing somebody who has had less than six years is all about, you know, just honoring the fact that the person has put in, you know, one term or maybe two two-year terms and has gained all that knowledge that we need to take advantage of. And then, you know, if the person gets as far as six years, then you know, that would be a time when you might consider replacing the person with somebody who's been waiting to get on that committee. So um, I, that's, that's what we have in the, the former OCA procedure and the town manager and this committee, GOL. They all have that incorporated. So I just, it makes sense to me to have it be unified as a town council procedure because I don't see any reason why we wouldn't do that. Um, because we really need to honor those people who have put in the time. And there's, if there's no other, you know, good reason to try to oust that person um, or you know not reapp reappoint a person, there's obviously sometimes reasons why you know you really don't want to reappoint somebody. But if there isn't such a reason and they you know have put in the time, then um, it makes sense to me to have a, have a unified appointment uh, rule around term limits. Mandy? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put my CRC hat on because that is a different opinion than I have as a counselor. Um, CRC wrote that, had me write that memo and had that vote because um, over the course of multiple, and, and this wasn't just CRC, this was an OCA experience too, over the course of multiple planning board appointments and even ZBA appointments um, that this council has made, there has been a lot of um, discussion regarding mostly surrounding reappointments um, that, that reflects on term limits, um, but regarding whether a person who is seated and a current member of a planning board or ZBA um, who is seeking to continue that membership, um, what type of preference or non-preference does that person receive um, in the interview process? Um, we have seen that the town manager um, gives them complete preference. In other words, they don't even that. interview anyone else, basically. Um, but the council has different opinions on that. And it has come up in multiple planning board and ZBA appointments. And so in the last sort of um, discussion after the last set of appointments that CRC had, um, after we went through that appointment process, which for CRC was the first time we had been through that process, um, we, we sort of did a, you know, after the fact review and the discussion went that um, because it keeps coming up, uh, the question remains, should the council have a quote council policy on what it dealt, how it deals with individuals whose terms are expiring, who would like to continue. Um, and 
CRC believed that that was not a decision that CRC should make because it was not within CRC's charge. And so that's why it voted the way it did. And that vote was unanimous um, that if the council sought such a policy or thought it would be a good thing to review and ask someone to do that it would fall to GOL to discuss whether such a policy was um, good or not. So that's the CRC hat. Um, I personally do not favor a single policy and much of it revolves around um, the reason the council as a whole um, is the appointing authority for ZBA and planning board. And that is because they are by default in some sense, political positions that are not elected. And as a council has two year terms, we as a council, I highly believe that we as a council should not ever tie a future council's hands on whether that council due to our council's policy must reappoint a position. Um, a member to someone else and having a council policy that that goes to that position um, would tie a future council's hands and make them um, have the same issue we have essentially, um, either follow that policy or not. And that brings up a lot of issues because that council may have been elected in order to actually reappoint or appoint new people to those boards because of what those boards are doing or not. Um, and so to say, we already are appointing these positions to three-year terms, which for some people, that means an entirely new council won't even get a chance to appoint two of the members of say the planning board um, or three, depending on when it goes, um, to then say, oh, and if someone still wants their term, you're stuck with having to do that. Even if the thing you ran on was changing the makeup of that body. And so because they're political positions, I believe, and that we are required to announce them as vacancies and um, whether or not it's a reappointment, I really believe that each time we get to that appointment, it is a new process. It is a new appointment um, that that person's service certainly goes into whether they're qualified and everything, but that should not be the only criteria and much of these policies seems to indicate that that should be the primary criteria on whether someone gets reappointed or not, um, or whether we consider new people for the positions. So I am against having a council policy that would, that would push us to having to go that direction. Uh. Um, I have a couple small things. I'm not sure where I'm coming down on this yet. Um, number one, the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board are political positions. And I think it's disingenuous as a, a government um, that we don't elect them. Because then, Mandy, that would represent what you're saying, that the council wants a certain change. Um, I don't think that our council has a unified vision of what they want in planning and zoning at this time. So uh, I'm, I'm feeling uncomfortable with um, you, and I know you were doing it sort of metaphorically speaking, that the council wants this. Uh, one or two counselors is not the council in, in either direction, doesn't matter what the position is. So that's one thing. The other thing I had my hand up before and I wanted to pull down, all these processes in their own way get ignored. The town manager supposedly follows the OCA and GOL process. He does not. Uh, if you take the Disability uh, Access Advisory Committee, there were severe vacancies. He removed two long-term members and he did not fill those positions because there weren't people out there. But he was for whatever reason, he decided for whatever reason to remove those people and nothing was done about it for quite a while. So, so there's the ideal of what the policy says and there's the reality. And both of those issues feel important to me, both what you're saying about planning board and zoning and also what I'm saying about it's, it's the whim 
of the appointing authority, whether it's the committee or the town manager. And I think to pretend otherwise is not fair, is not real. Uh, Darcy? Yeah, um, I hadn't heard that argument that Mandy Jo just made before. Um, and it, it's also concerning to me that we would not take into consideration the full, all the different views on the town council and how they represent the town as a whole. Um, and we wouldn't want our council to be like the majority of the council. We wouldn't want the majority of the council to, um, to try to ensure that their view was the only view represented on the planning board or the zoning board of appeals or whatever we would, you know, I'm assuming that as a council, we want different voices heard. Um, and we want to make sure that, you know, that the different bodies of the town council, uh, maybe they don't represent the majority of, the, of that body, like the planning board, but that they, they represent at least the split on the council. Um, and so, yeah, that, that doesn't feel right to me that we're, that, that, that we would want to remove people who um, are, have been appointed presumably because they're, um, they're, I mean, at least when we were in Oko, there was a big point made about how we're not supposed to be looking at politics at all. That these are our appointments based on people's competency and merits. And if we have made our appointment based on that, then you know we should honor them for that period of time of you know two, three year terms or three two year terms. That I noticed that the different the policies differed on that, but up to six years. Um, so that uh, those people are allowed to, you know, to, to, to use their skills and it's, it's you know, it, I don't really see why it's an issue now uh, because we have a very, very small minority of, of uh, you know, a differing view right now on the planning board. And so I, I guess I just don't see where this is coming from. Lower your hand, Darcy. Mandy Jo has her hand raised. So I agree with Pat that it's not the council, it's individual counselors. Um, you know, and, and I think that's why I go to it shouldn't be a council policy. We are elected as counselors to bring um, our own opinions, our own beliefs of what constituents want, our own beliefs of how a multiple member body should be made up, um, and, and our own experience in reflecting on that at any time there is an expiring term and a need to appoint someone to that what is a vacancy. Um, and given the discussions we've had here and in OCA and in GOL and in CRC, um, it is clear that counselors have various and wide ranging views on all of it, um, which is why I firmly believe we shouldn't have a council policy because I think it engenders um, a lot of problems. If we could find say seven people to agree with, everyone gets, a max of six years, no matter what. I don't know whether we can find seven people, but say we find seven people on the, this council to say, yep, automatic reappointment. If they want it, you get six years, no matter what. Um, we won't even really interview anyone 
if they say they want reappointment, we'll advertise like we have to for the charter, but we won't interview anyone. Say we find seven votes for that. Um, the people that don't agree with that will have a lot of issue with trying to follow that um, because they have to still vote on an actual person when it comes up for a vote. And say we find on the opposite side, we find seven votes for a view of, it really is everyone's individual opinion and all of that. Well, then the six people that don't agree with that, that the believe it will vote, will still either have to decide to vote for that either way um, or to go with their own beliefs of, no, if you've been reappointed and even though that was a council before the council I'm on and before I was even on council that made that appointment, um, I don't want that person on it or maybe I do. And even though they've hit their six terms, I still want them on or they haven't hit their six terms and this group over here doesn't want them on, but this group does. You're, you're stuck in this quagmire of if the council adopts a policy as a counselor, do you follow that policy even though you do not agree with it when you actually have to vote on a person? on an actual recommendation when you know the exact names of the people who actually applied, you can watch the videos, you can watch the interviews and you have to do an up or down vote. And so I truly believe that when it comes time to that up or down vote, each of us has to bring our own beliefs on how long an appropriate term is, the makeup of a body, whether the person that is being recommended by the committee being making that recommendation, um, is who you believe is the right one or not, and then vote yes or no on the motion. And to create a policy that is set in the handbook um, about it, I think creates a lot of problems for individual counselors, including, you know, we are lucky that we've appointed everyone on these boards ourselves for these two positions. But in a year, many counselors will not have been part of that process for the appointments that come up and potentially the individuals who are seeking a second or a third term that come up. There will be many counselors that have not been a part of that process, had not weighed in for that first appointment to that person maybe, and maybe didn't agree with that first appointment. And what do you do then as a counselor? Um, you know, and so I, again, I just firmly believe that the council should not have a policy on this that requires all counselors to follow it because I think it's not good for the counselors. Um, I'd just like to give an example of how I think this should work. Um, when, um, when OCA voted on uh, before this went to GOL, OCA was responsible for resident members of the finance committee. And um, one person that I voted for, um, I would not normally have voted for, uh, but she had already uh, had a year on the former finance committee of experience. Um, so I put her forward as, uh, as a, a resident um, member of the finance committee, uh, even though she would not have been someone that I would have normally supported um, because she'd had that experience. And because I felt like that was the fair and reasonable thing to do. And I can't imagine that counselors are, are not, would not be able to do that in general. Um, you know, follow the, follow the principle of how we are going to honor experience regardless of politics or whatever, up until the person has been on the committee for, or the board for, for uh, six years. If I may, two thoughts occur to me. One, first of all, we only make recommendation to the council. The decision is made by the council, not by us. And let me give you a hypothetical. We make appointments, excuse me. 
to make recommendations to the council for appointments to um, finance. Imagine we put somebody on finance and um, we have this rule in effect that they get, you know, basically they, they basically have tenure. Okay. And we, you know, we check in occasionally or we attend a finance meeting occasionally, whatever we talk to people on finance committee. And this person never says a word or this person never comes or rarely comes or rarely speaks, makes very little contribution. It seems to me that, that service on these particular bodies um, is qualitatively different for very obvious reasons than service on many, many other bodies, which are you know wonderful bodies. And, but um, we have three members on the finance committee and that's it, three you know, non-voting resident members. And clearly I would think this recommending body would want them to be engaged and active. And if we found that someone was not coming or they were there, but they never said a word, never asked a question, never made a contribution. We checked with the chair and the chair said, yeah, I'm sorry, you know, Smith is, you know, very pleasant person, but doesn't contribute anything or very little, right? But if we have a fixed policy that says, well, you know, as long as you serve, right? Now we have town committees where, you know, that can happen. And I just don't think it's at the same level of concern. Um, ideally, you know, the town manager might think, you know, well, if so-and-so is on this shade tree committee or whatever, and they never come, I should not reappoint them. That seems perfectly reasonable. But um, so A, we only make recommendations and B, I think a fixed policy would be a terrible mistake because it basically ties our hands now. Um, and I think Mandy's right. In the end, this is a decision made by the counselors and you have to look at each candidate and think, you know, okay, I've got the recommendation of GOL or I've got the recommendation of CRC. I've got the minutes of the meeting. Maybe I even attended it and listened to the interviews or whatever. But um, just the idea of automatic, just because you've been on there four years or two years or whatever, guarantees you another term. Um, it's a factor. I think Darcy's right. Experience matters. I don't think it's just a matter of whether you agree with them. Um, there are people on the planning board right now that I do not agree with but they're there, they're engaged, they contribute. What more can I ask? Okay, so I don't have a problem with that. But if I have someone say serving on that board who um, is difficult, doesn't work with the team, refuses to say hypothetically uh, step off of subcommittees that they've been appointed to, fires off, uh, you know, shall we say kindly intemperate or you know, inappropriate emails. That's a warning sign for me, a warning flag, okay? And I don't wanna have my hands tied by some, you know, overarching rule that says, oh, sorry, Ryan, you know, you're just gonna to have to vote for them because they got tenure. I'm not that fond of tenure in the academic law. I never got it, okay? And I, I, you know, I'm happy for people who get it, but I think you should be evaluated on what you're doing now. And you sh we should have the ability to make recommendations that are based on, you know, what's the current situation, not just on the fact that they, you know, served X number of years. It's a factor, it's important, it should be considered, but I don't wanna tie our hands. So that's my concern um, is that it basically would tie our hands and keep us from, you know, doing what I think we should do as a responsible recommending body. Pat. You know, I agreed with parts of what you're saying, George, uh, so hear that. But I also know that the word difficult, is, the word difficult is subjective. Uh, working with the team in many ways is subjective. And inappropriate emails, I can, you know, like the one we got as counselors that said, you suck. I think that's inappropriate, but I got it. Um, and I'm not going to respond to it. So possibly uh, there could have been, because we're talking about a specific person, you know you are. No, and it's, it's, a hypo, it's a hypothetical. Happen. I'm just imagining okay. a situation yeah. uh, where someone is- So yeah, if what there are inappropriate emails, that still can flounder in the realm of subjective. And, and my concern is uh, more than ever before, and this doesn't help this uh, discussion at all, these are clearly political positions that should be filled by the electorate. 
not by CRC, not by TSO. I, you know, I'm not pulling, uh, and particularly because those committees can get stacked, and in many ways they have been. Um, and once it's stacked, it has uh, it creates a recommendation. My responsibility then, if I'm not on that committee, is to and this I don't see it happening. Uh, my vote then in the council, I, I guess I, my other concern, which isn't really part of this conversation, is that we don't take our responsibility uh, seriously. Once we get a recommendation from a committee, we say, okay. And I think that needs to stop. I think that we have to have as much information as the committee. And, and it and there have been people who have been put on important committees uh, like planning board and zoning, et cetera, that shouldn't be there because they don't really have the qualifications, but we didn't really uh, do that. So somehow or other, we need to weaken the power of a committee to determine who gets selected. And particularly, and, and I will say CRC is pretty, pretty um, unified and no, no shame or blame. Um, that's just the reality. Uh, so not 100%, but I think that that's, that is there and it's a concern to me. So as to the specific question of term limits and having a single policy for the council, I'm not hearing any sort of consensus, um, certainly among the four of us, obviously we're missing one of our, of our members, um, but um, I'm not saying we need to take a vote, but I, I'm not hearing a consensus for recommending any sort of single policy to the council on the issue of term limits. That right now there is a difference between these two committees and some are uncomfortable with that, some are not but I'm not hearing a sense that amongst the four of us at least, there's any agreement as to proposing an alternative. I think what I'm hearing from Pat is a, a larger concern about the process as a whole and whether um, committees should even have the recommending authority. Maybe it should just be the council, um, you know, doing it, but I don't know. I, but again, no, that would I be- No, I think a committee question. has to recommend. That would yeah. be- that, that is the committee's work. I, okay. I agree 100%. Okay. My concern is that as counselors, we assume an automatic blessing on that. And I think that's a habit we have. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily a good habit. I haven't even really thought about it so much, mm -hmm. before, but this conversation is bringing that up for me. So it's not about committee. Okay. I think also the committee report is important. In other words, if in a recommending, I mean, with CRC, as you pointed out, Pat, um, I'm sorry, Darcy, your hands up. I just wanted to say say that you know there's no consensus either way. Um, there's between the four of us, and you know my opinion from the beginning has been that this whole discussion doesn't belong in a committee. It just it's it's a discussion that we should have as a whole council and try to decide, you know, whether there's a majority of us that wants a unified policy on it and what it would be. Um, which they would have to end up doing anyway if we sent a report saying we couldn't get a consensus one way or the other, you know. Um, so I, you know, I, I feel personally like it's important and that, you know, we can't really make it go away just because the four of us don't agree. Nobody's trying to make it go away. Mandy, mm -hmm. has her hand up. So I, I just want to give a little interesting fact um, that I, I know simply from my charter commission days. Um, state law requires zoning boards of appeals to be appointed and state law also requires um, for cities of which we are now one um, that they are also appointed not elected. Um, they actually have a mayor appointment with a council so um, we discussed that with the planning board as a potential. Um, we weren't sure we'd be able to get it past the AG's office on a review, um, but if, if we did go to election because of state law, but I thought I'd just mention that um, okay. regarding you. why there might be an appointment instead of having gone the election route. Thank you.
I personally would think that if this went to the council, what the council would do would be find somebody to go to study it and then rec make recommendation to the council. Um, it's, it's we already we already spend enough time as it is on this sort of thing. And um, I guess I'm reaching the, the limit, my limit. Um, I think I passed my limit a long time ago, where we use up enormous amounts of council time on these sorts of matters. And there's a process we follow and a committee chews on it. And this committee uh, at the moment is chewing on it and can continue to chew on it if you so wish. But we also have a number of things we need to do related to bylaws that we need to get to quickly and start working on. So um, you could discuss this, I guess, with the council president. I could discuss it with her. Um, I'm not eager to put this on the agenda and just have a free for all discussion. Um, but uh, that's just my personal yep. opinion. Andy? So. I'm gonna do something people hate. Um, maybe a, a move to table this item indefinitely. Well, I'll second that just to, to get some discussion. Uh, could you speak to your motion? So yeah, um, we are at a crossroads where we don't have a good, um, there's no consensus. So there's really no vote. Um, and I also, I think we're also at a point where committees are starting to, including CRC right now, is starting to invoke its process right now for the upcoming appointments that happen and interviews that'll happen in about two, two and a half months. Um, and so it's getting a bit late to actually if it goes to the council, even without a consensus um, to do anything for this upcoming process. And we're missing a member. And so at this point, I think it's something that we should just stop talking about um, until maybe uh, back at a more reasonable time. I'm a... <laughs> You're assuming you know how I would vote because no, I don't know how anyone would vote. We're hearing my questions, and I think the questions are important. Um, and I think it could come out two to two. It could come out three to one. It could come out four to four. Whatever. I think that the committee has been working on this. Tabling it is not appropriate. I think we could either vote or we can, uh, uh, or we can um, <laughs> or we could bring it to the council so we could waste a whole lot of fucking time. Um, I know we'll I should. We'll bleep it. that out, right? Yeah, uh, I know. Athena will bleep that out. Said it. Thank you. Um, I don't know. So anyway, I, I think that not saying anything, temp, temp, tabling it so CRC can go forward, uh, um, that doesn't feel like a good reason. Now, um, you know, Pat, that we will also, as a committee, be making uh, recommendations for finance. Um, and so we will start the process as well. And okay. we will be reviewing our process. And it can change. Um, it's not set in stone. We go through the whole thing. So. Um, you know, there's just there's just a timeline here that's that's getting started, um, and it will involve the four the five of us in terms of reviewing the process and then sending out public notice, um, and and then seeing who applies as candidates. We have no idea at the moment, so we will be involved in our own process in reviewing it. CRC will be involved in their own process in reviewing it. The question before us is whether uh, the council wants to establish an overarching. Uh, policy on term limits alone right now, as, the, as far as I can see, is the only specific issue. Does it, do we also want to get into the matter of, you know, statements of interest and, and CAFs and, and, you know, are the, you know, we do our interviews differently than CRC. I think that we do them um, appropriately. I think it's a much more humane and much more successful approach. Um, but that's open to debate. We'll debate that as a committee and maybe we'll decide to change our interview policy and do it differently. But right now we interview each person individually um, and we don't have a set of questions. Each person gets one question and a follow-up. And so it's a little bit more free, it's little, but 
you may disagree and decide as a committee you want to do it differently. That's the decision made by the committee. So we have some issues we have to resolve as a committee before we can go ahead with our process. CRC will do the same thing. I really think that, that sending this to the council at this point um, is going to be a colossal waste of time. Well, I agree. I and, agree. And I think we yeah. should, the way to prevent that um, well, is to acknowledge it and from this perspective of this committee to table it and, and say, we're just not in any place right now where we can make any kind of recommendation one way or the other. And I have no desire to simply turn to the council president and say, so just let the council talk about it for an hour or two or two and a half. Um, I, I'm not in that position. Um, on the other hand, if this committee says, yes, we want you to go to the council president and tell her that this needs to be put on a request to be put on the agenda. I mean, each one of you individually can make that request. Apparently we have something on our agenda for Monday night that was the result of three councilors making a request for an item to be put on the agenda. Um, so there are a lot of ways this can be handled. Uh, you can make the request individually. You can ask me as okay, a chair to make it. it. I'm sorry? <laughs> we got it, George. <laughs> oh, well, then what do you want me to do? I mean, I, the motion right now is to table. I think that that makes sense given the situation we're in. But um, I and, can support tabling it for now as long as we uh, know that it may come back. I agree about not wasting council time, and that will be what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be. It'll well, be good, Pat. Help me with coming back, and Darcy can help me here too. Um, and maybe, maybe Darcy, uh, the fifth member of our committee, may want to uh, weigh in here. When it does come back, I think it needs to have some more specific form. Um, is it just about term limits? And if it is, then make a proposal. Put put a proposal in writing, and that we can actually look at and discuss. Um, that's what I would ask. If we do table it, and it does come back. If we don't table it, I probably still would ask for that, you know, please, you know, but it's gonna eat up a lot of time for us, let alone for the council. So motion has been made and seconded, Darcy or Duhanda. Um, yeah, I, I guess I don't understand why we would specifically make a motion to table this um, when we haven't, I don't know why we wouldn't just send a report to the council as that we had a discussion, we didn't have a consensus. And that, that would be it, yes. And that we voted would. to table it. Pardon? <laughs> and that we voted to table it or not, but yeah. Um, yeah. That would be I, the report. I think that it, 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 I don't understand why we would do that. Um, I think we're trying to clear out the, we have a lot of work to do, and I want to stop this discussion very soon because we really have to get to, to the bylaws. We've been putting this off and putting this off. We really need to turn to it. Well, I'm uh, still talking, George. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I, I guess I, I'm wondering why, why we would do this, why um, if, we, if we move to table it, are we suggesting that the council table it or just that we table it? And um, I, I personally think this is one of the most important issues that the council could discuss. So, you know, cause it goes to, to democracy. It goes to the, to the voice of the minority. Um, and- In democracy, the minority loses. Oh, to table it, it. excuse me. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. To table it, sorry, I, you know, I find to be like, completely silencing of, of the minority. That's what it is. It silences the minority and to table it is to say, okay, we're gonna stop talking about this. Mandy? So the difference between tabling and just sending a report off, sending a report off without a motion seems to imply that it still might be ready for council discussion. Um, and this is frankly, I don't believe ready for council discussion. There's no proposal on the table that we could even vote on, none of that. And so you can put a report, but if you can put a report with and the committee tabled it, it recommend it recognizes that the committee has recognized or it reports that the committee has recognized that it's a potentially an important issue that is not right for full council discussion, um, but that the committee's not necessarily done with, but is done with for the time being is sort of postponing any further discussion for a while. Um, that doesn't mean at any future meeting, someone can't move to lift from the table 
this particular issue and if that gets in a committee three votes it's it's then back for discussion but it sort of puts a pause on everything to say it's it's not done the committee's not done but the committee's going to take a break from it and formalizes that break this i believe has formally been referred to us through all of that weird referral things that happened after the last um retreat or something i don't know which means the council in theory cannot take it up without a separate motion under robert's rules to remove the issue from the committee completely um it is sitting in this committee until we are complete with it under robert's rules that's what a referral to a committee does the council can't take it up until it's out of the committee or the council makes a motion to remove that matter from the committee so so the council couldn't take it up if we table it or if we haven't actually had an action. And so this is one way to finalize something to say, here's our current action on this to be able for George to report that out in a committee report. All right, any further discussion? We have a motion that's been seconded, um, Darcy. So, Mandy Joe is saying that if we voted for this, this would prevent the council from taking it up. Temporarily. The council's currently prevented from taking it up on its own unless we remove, unless we report back to the council with that specific, unless we're finished with the item. So at this it means the council can't take it up either. So at this key time when the planning board is going to be looking at new new uh, members, we won't be able to change the rules. Unless we have a different motion. It also, well, why don't we just come up with, since I would like to have a separate proposal, and I was sort of assuming that we could just take the language of OCA or the town manager's handbook or, uh, or even GOL, and use the language that we already have in those three places. Um, if we need a separate proposal, then that's pretty easy to get since we have the language in three different places. Except it appears that not ever, that this committee hasn't reached consensus that they would be willing to even recommend that language. It also seems to me uh, important I would like to table it. And um, as always, anything you decide has its own risks. But I think that Sarah, who has advocated very strongly for certain kinds of positions and has worked diligently on OCA, uh, I would love to have her have an opportunity to participate. I know she's not here uh, today and you know that's the luck of the draw. Um, but tabling it gives a, a chance to hear her perspective and her voice, which I value. And as Mandy has pointed out, and Mandy, correct me if I'm mistaken, this can come back to discussion at any time by someone making a motion to bring it off the table, and they would need three votes to do that. Yep. Any further discussion? I'm going to proceed directly to a vote. This time I'm going to start with Pat. Uh, we're voting to table it. Aye. Aye. Okay. The chair is a yes. Darcy? No. Mandy? Aye. So the vote is three in favor, one opposed, and one absent. This motion has been tabled, and I will notify the, the council of that in my report. I will try to capture some of the argument that has been presented um, previously uh, to the best of my ability. And uh, so let us move on then to the next item, which is item four, which um, is not going to be discussed. Uh, I just want to uh, mention, I did have a conversation with uh, Lynn and she has spoken with the town manager. He is okay with the idea of two-year goals. He sees that as a, uh, a reasonable way for a council to proceed. He had no problem with that idea. And he apparently is okay with a December date for evaluation. So moving away from a summertime um, period of evaluation to a December date. Um, so again, this is something that will have to come back to us 
and, and hopefully Paul will be present uh, for the discussion, but I'm, I'm talking with Lynn about when this can be uh, brought back to us, but that's the latest update I have. Um, he is okay with the December evaluation date and he sees no problem with two year goals. Um, and that's all the news I have. Okay. I wanna to turn to uh, bylaws for future consideration. I wanna put up on the screen um, the table of bylaws. We have two documents I'd like to use uh, this morning. Um, Mandy has sent us an excellent document that I'm gonna to turn to in a few minutes that gives us the update of where she's at. And I wanna go through that with you um, for the next uh, hopefully half hour to 40 minutes at the most, um, as much as our energies will allow, because we really do need to proceed on these. Um, I've had some difficulties getting responses from town hall, and we'll talk about that briefly and any recommendations you have from me as to what to do about that would be welcome. Um, so I'm going to um, hang on for a second here, share this to the screen. Um, all right. Okay. And this, I believe, is the... Okay, are you able to see that? No, I see each of the little documents. I don't see any document. So it's not showing you that document, all right? I don't know what you clicked on, honey. That's all right. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. I'm going to open that document. It's in a folder. And then I'm going to try again. Bear with me. Um, oh, this is it, yeah. Okay, you should be yeah. able to see that. Thank you. Yeah, that works. Yeah. All right, let me move this over. Is that large enough for you to see? Yeah. All right. So we're going to go through these one by one. Turns out that mine are at the top, and Mandy's come next. And when we get to Mandy's, we'll go to Mandy's document and we'll look at specifically what she has learned. Um, this is a problematic one. I sent these bylaws to Paul back in January. I sent another email reminding him of, the, of him of that. And now I've sent him yet another email just recently reminding him of that. Um, uh, and I need the human rights director to review them and to weigh in. So I am stuck here. Uh, I don't know what to do. Um, maybe I can reach out to Lynn. Maybe I just have to call Paul, but I have sent him repeated emails and I understand he's got an enormous amount on his plate, but at the moment I'm stuck. Um, on this particular bylaw. I need the HR director to weigh in. Um, we have a new HR director, relatively new, so there may also be issues there, but that's where I am at the moment with this particular item. It's been sent out twice and with reminders twice. <clears throat> no action. This one, <clears throat> we did get a response. <clears throat> I think I've shared it with you already. Um, there's no problem with um, the uh, document in terms of uh, legal concerns. It's been uh, registered, it's been signed, that has been taken care of. Nate Malloy assures us of all of that. Um, where I have a question, and I'm not sure Pat can help with this, maybe Evan, maybe someone else from the old uh, bylaw review committee. Um, the language, as you can see in the far left column, is somewhat vague. There were some other recommendations. Okay. Um, reinstate the original language of the bylaw need to do compare. I, I, so I'm going to need some guidance from the old bylaw review committee or some, something as to what it is that they are asking us to do. The legal part of it has been taken care of. It is registered as a trust. It's been signed and filed. And um, apparently, uh, actually, what does it say? A declaration of trust must be filed at the registry of deeds whenever the trust acquires any interest in property. So it's not something that's done once. It's done only when there's, so that's apparently well understood by the trust and understood by planning. So that is covered as far as I can tell from my emails back and forth, but I do not know what to do with the, the three bullet points here. Um, I, I just don't, I'm gonna need help. Um, and so again, either now or after the meeting, if uh, Pat or one of you can suggest who I can reach out to, to get- I can go back and look at my notes, but on um, the recommendation thing, that seems so vague, I can't believe it. The uh, 
I do believe now the, the recommendation that the Affordable Housing Trust submit an annual report, don't they do that now? Is so that get, added? Uh, Pardon me? Thank you, Pat. That may very well be true. I just need to confirm that with John. Um, I can yeah. do that. Good. And then, if, yeah. I reinstate the original language to compare with the old bylaw. I don't the old bylaw had the original language, so I'm like, <laughs> um, uh, I'm sorry, I can't do more than that. So is there anyone that I could, um, so I'm going to just say. Bob Ritchie, I could talk to Bob Ritchie. I, I can do that, Pat, there's no problem. So okay. check, check Great. with John. Yeah. He'll know. Bob, <laughs> and then uh, Bob Ritchie. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he knows. Okay. okay. Thank you. I will reach out to Bob and I will check with John. And that one then should be fine, um, unless I hear something otherwise. The third item I had to do with license and permits. Um, again, I contacted Paul with a request for legal review. I've heard nothing. I reminded him I heard nothing. And now I've sent him yet another and with the bylaw with a request for legal review. And I still have heard nothing. So that's where we're at there. Just stuck. And I really don't know what to do. Um, uh, so I don't meet with Paul. I don't see him uh, personally. Um, I only deal with him um, by email. And on rare occasions, I call him, but I try not to bother him. Um, so maybe if Lynn were here, I could ask. So maybe I'll reach out to Lynn and ask for her advice. But I, I'm stuck here. I don't know what to do. You could, you, you could also, I mean, if there's something specific about town services, you could um, ask me to bring it up in my meetings yeah. with Paul about yeah. TSO. I mean, if it's somehow related. I don't think it is, Darcy. I appreciate that. It, that's an awkward, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, yeah. I prefer this be done the normal way, which is that he gets back to me and just says, it's been sent off or I'm waiting or, you know, uh, don't bother the HR director for the next three months, she's swamped. I just don't know, I have heard nothing. So. Um, I, I'll continue to try and find answers. And if anybody has a way of getting the answers, I'd like them to reach out to me, um, but I'm stuck with those two. And I will reach out to Bob and I'll reach out to John just to confirm, I think Pat is right. I think there is an annual report. He's probably told me that three times and I've just forgotten. That's all right. Um, but um, okay. So that's where we are for the first three. Um, good, at least I have two things I can do related to those. Um, Mandy, I'm going to um, stop sharing the screen now, uh, or actually I can also put your document up. Maybe that's the easiest way. Um, if you'll bear with me for a second. Um, let's see if that will, let me just take me just a moment. I wanna save that, I don't wanna lose it. Um, and so um, I have Mandy's memo and I'm going to share that with you. Okay. All right, so this is the memo she sent us. Um, and she's in her usual thorough and careful way has taken us through this. So Mandy, I'm gonna let you um, take us through this and then suggest what next steps, if any are needed. Start with 315 activities and amusements. Yeah, so for that one, um, uh, you know, you guys can all read. So it, we've got the language. The language was simple. The bylaw review committee said we needed to decide on a penalty amount, but there was a different priority that said um, that that one, the bylaw review committee said, do we even need it? So that's what I sent off to the manager, um, ask the chief about penalty amounts and everything. And you can see the chief's response um, right. that um, he doesn't remember making that response to the bylaw review committee, but at the same time, um, he's not against getting rid of it. Um, but he also says the current fine, which is $200, even in a non-criminal manner, um, is a deterrent to actually having, um, law enforcement use the bylaw. So based on that, um, we need to decide, I think, as a committee, whether our recommendation is to um, recommend that the council lower the penalty amount um, or recommend that the council rescind the bylaw. 
I don't know whether you want me to go on or whether we just want to stick with I, this. I'd one. like you to, I'd like to do with each one of these to the point where we have a sense of where we're going to go next. So I'd like you to continue if you would. Yep. So that's that one. Those are the two things we have to decide, one or the other or both, I guess. Um, the next one is littering and illegal dumping. This is one where the current plan is sort of wait and see. Um, the bylaw. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I was going to actually, I, I wasn't clear. Oh. I feel like we should we should make a decision on 315 oh. okay. and then we'll go on to the next one. Sorry. That's okay. Um, do you have a recommendation or a personal preference on this? I mean, I think I recommend getting rid of it, but that's just it. my own personal preference. Um, you know, part of that is the the size of the fine, right? Um, yeah. But the other part is it just seems no no person shall play ball. I mean, that in, in, in the street seems to make sense, right? Um, but the second sentence is the one that I have the bigger problem with, which is no person while playing ball or an engaging in an amusement activity in a park or common shall interfere with another event. Um, I feel like there's probably state laws that that would do it. Um, and I, I just feel like this is something that could be abused. Even if it's not right now, if we lowered the amount, it might be able to be abused to, yeah. Well, so this is where I, I don't, you know, I trust that most of our police officers, if not all, would never abuse this, but I fear that, um, it has the potential yeah. to be used um, in a harassing manner, even though I don't believe our officers would do so. Um, but if the town folk um, didn't like something going on and could call the officers to respond to something like this, in that sense, it could also be abused, not necessarily by the officers on their own, but um, by we've we've seen this a lot with residents um, using noise bylaws to to get officer response to everything. Um, that this is one that concerns me that it could be used in a similar manner. Um, well, let's look at it again, um, Mandy. Um, again, just raise your hand or just speak up. But I can understand. I mean, the chief thinks that it's a useful tool to have. For instance, you you say reserved uh, some space in a park. And a group of kids, you know, un unbeknownst to you and unbeknownst to them that you've reserved it, have decided to play a baseball game right where you had your reserved space. And um, you asked them to leave and they said, well, we got here first. And you said, but I have a reservation and that's how the system works. And they just, for whatever reason, shrug their shoulders and continue to play. Um, you don't have much recourse. Um, this allows you to call up the police and say, look, here's our reservation. We, we you know, we paid for this space or whatever. Um, clearly, these people are preventing us from using it, and would you please uh, ask them to leave? Um, so I think there is a place for this. This kind of thing does happen, um, and it's specific to playing ball or engaging in any amusement or activity in any park or common of this town that interferes with another event or activity already in progress or previously reserved. So I guess it's designed, if there is a conflict, the officer is going to have to resolve it. And again, we have to trust their judgment. Um, I'm not so much worried about abuse. I am worried about taking it out and removing a very useful tool where the police officer can say, look, um, there's technically a bylaw here. Um, you can get fined X dollars. So what I'm asking you to do is pack up your, your balls and bats and go home. If you refuse, then I'm going to have to do take another step. Um, so it seems like a useful tool to have. The penalty perhaps could be lessened, but I guess I'm not so much worried about abuse since this is dealing with basically, you know, common space where there's a conflict between two parties. Thoughts of the rest of you on this? Darcy. I wouldn't have any problem with getting rid of this whole thing. Um, the, uh, the no person shall play ball or similar amusement in any street seems like we, we, you know, in my neighborhood, everybody plays in the street all the time. Everybody puts their basketball nets right on the street. And it's, you know, people take walks with their basketball so they can shoot in every hoop that they pass. You know, it's like, oh, that is, you know, not appropriate for my neighborhood. Um, and uh, I guess I feel like if the police can be called to come and 
deal with a situation in a park and and the fine is not really that meaningful as far as actually preventing that from happen happening and i guess i feel like we're, it's a little overzealous to have this exist in the first place other thoughts yeah well i feel like it's open to abuse um both of them are open to abuse we've had uh young by punk people playing ball in their own yard and their neighbors calling the police and the police arriving. We've had uh, all kinds of things happen. So this needs to be gotten rid of. Hmm. Other thoughts? So I, I understand George's desire um, to, to keep it as a potential option, but I think when you see Chief Livingstone's response, he says he can't even he he can't say if he's even heard of anyone being written up for this bylaw. So it's clearly not the one being used. Um, but also the playing ball in a street. Well, there's already state laws about impeding traffic, you know. And and as Darcy says, many kids play in streets. Many adults play in streets because that's where you've got your pavement, right? Um, but you're not impeding traffic. And so the problem shouldn't be playing in streets. The problem should be impeding traffic. And there's already state laws about right. that. Um, and I, I would say similarly for this, you know, what you described at a, a previous reservation and all, there's disorderly conduct. There's state issues that if it really becomes a problem, there's other enforcement tools that don't the, you know that that right. can right. be used that this one doesn't need to be on the books for i i just feel like it's just almost an overkill in a sense yep. there are conflicts in our parks and commons occasionally um and i'm not saying that this would re that would necessarily resolve them but it does give um the officers uh, a tool to use to try and resolve them in a way. Um, it does so, seem to me though, George, if there is a concert on the common, the South Common is usually where they are. It's filled with people right. sitting all around and who's going to start a baseball game? And if they did, they could be asked politely to leave. And if they didn't, I guess you could call the police. I don't see where this is necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can I make a motion? Sure, please go ahead. I'm going to move to recommend the council rescind bylaw 3.15 activities and amusements. Is there a second? Okay. Second by? DeAngelis. Thank you. Thank you. I guess it should be general bylaw 3.15. OK. And the arguments are essentially that um, potential for abuse. It's not in use. Not in use. Not use, number one. <laughs> okay, now fine, I, I just, right, not in use. Um, fine is excessive. And, and there's and potential there's for other, abuse. There's other mechanisms for if things become a problem for, for dealing with issues. Right. So other mechanisms to deal with? Potential problems. With potential problems. All right. And the arguments for? basically would be the chief would like to keep it because it's a good tool to have on hand. And I know from um, hearsay that- uh, the, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Was... I'm sorry? I, I was gonna say the chief actually says this one certainly applies and I would support removing it. Yeah. Read the last sentence, George. Uh, I guess I'm reading bullet point two, but um, so that later he changed his mind. Response from Chief Livingstone. I don't ever recall making a comment about it being a good tool as I can't. Ah, I'm sorry. He, okay. I remember some discussion, blah, blah, Thank blah. You. In the end, if the council is looking to get rid of bylaws that are just plain not necessary or not enforced, this is one certainly applies and I would support that. Thank you very much. I apologize. Um, I have, I'm going to take a very, very quick break. I just want you to know, but I will be right back. All right. Okay. Quick, let's vote while Pat is away. Thank you, Mandy. I completely misread that. I did read this actually, but it was a while ago, and a few things have happened since I read it. So, yeah. Um, good. So the only reason really to do it would be my somewhat weak argument that these kinds of conflicts do occur, 
but the chief himself has said that, you know, it, this, right. So there really isn't a particularly strong reason to keep it and some good reasons to get rid of it. Good. Um, all right. Well, we get a moment to catch our breath. Anyone else need to take a break? We're, uh, what time is it? It is almost noon. Almost noon. I'd hope to get through at least Mandy's today. Um, and then we'll look ahead. To We're going to be able to say we've made progress. Well, we I appreciate that, Mandy. Thank you. But we really do need to make progress. Um, <laughs> so I'll and, be happy to see something show up at a council meeting. <laughs> exactly. No, it's true. It would be nice to actually have something to recommend. Um, and I don't really know. I'm really at wit's end in terms of, of, of getting an answer from, from Town Hall. I understand they have 50,000 things to do, and this is not very sexy. And really, um, but um, I just don't know what to do. I sent that email and you saw Paul respond. So I don't know what's up. Yeah, I don't want to speculate, um, though I do in the darker moments when I'm, you know, <laughs> you know, he just doesn't like me anymore. That kind of thing. It's pretty pathetic, I know. But um, so I don't know. I, I'm assuming it's just in the world of priorities. These are probably pretty far down the list. But mm -hmm. we're just running out of time. We're supposed we want to get through this in March. And we, you know, we've kind of put it off and put it off, or we've been waiting, actually, for months. So, ah, uh, okay, still missing. We do have a quorum. We, we could, could vote and then just catch Pat's vote when she gets back. Okay. Well, um, I, how could we do this legally? <laughs> we vote. By the time we get to her. Well, I, we do need her to be present for the next presentation, so we'll just have to wait. I'm sorry. So actually, I can look at your steps based. Right. Right. Okay. Well, I can put this on the screen. Okay, Pat, you're back. Yes, we're yes. done with this. We're done with discussion. We have a motion before us to, re to recommend to the council that bylaw, general bylaw 3.15, be rescinded in its entirety. Um, I'm going to go immediately to a vote. I'm going to start with um, Darcy. Yes. And Mandy. Aye. And the chair is a yes. And Pat. Aye. So the vote is 4-0 to make this recommendation to the council with one counselor absent. All right, Mandy. 316, littering and illegal dumping. Yep. So this one is one that is not ready for any, it's it's sort of in a wait and see. Um, this one, there were a lot of questions from the bylaw review committee on, um, let me get to the right side, um, on uh, clarifying what should be added or um, what might not want to be added um, in terms of refer, you know, for whether we should broaden what places in town can't have have a penalty for littering and illegal dumping. Mm -hmm. um, and so the response was um, from Dave Zomek that there's some merit to including conservation land and everything. And you can mm -hmm. see that response. Um, mm -hmm. They also recommended maybe it should go to the Conservation Commission. And then um, there was a question about whether it should also go to the Agricultural Commission because of APR land. And so right, right now, it is sitting at both conserv. Well, in theory, it has been referred to both conservation and agricultural. I have not followed up with Dave Zomack on those um, to see um, whether wh where it stands there. Um, but but we don't at this point have any. We're on a wait and see. Okay, so it's now in the hands of Ag and Conservation, and we're waiting to see what they're going to do with it, what recommendations they have to make. Once they make them, they come back to us and then we can proceed. All right. Yeah. Any other thoughts, comments about that? All right. And I can follow up with that, the Dave Zomek on where AgCom and ConCom stand mm -hmm. on this one, whether okay. it's up or not. Good. 3.26 nuisance house penalties for violation of the nuisance house bylaw, 3.26. Andy. So this this one, the question from bylaw review committee was basically definitions of alcoholic beverages and owner of record. Um, 
And so I asked that it be referred to the town attorney for that. And you can see the town attorney's response to that. Um, and so there, and then there was a question on non-criminal disposition in general too. Um, and so you've got the town attorney's response. Um, next step is there, because of the town attorney's response, I don't believe there's any action on the definition of alcoholic beverages needed. Um, and we need to, as a committee review and recommend on the attorney's recommendation regarding the definition of owner of record. She had some recommendations on changing that definition. Um, mm -hmm. And so that would be whether we can do that as a committee ourselves um, or whether it needs to go to a different town committee. Um, I, I assume that might be TSO, but I'm not sure, but we were also referred to deal with these bylaws. So I think it would be within our jurisdiction to say we're just dealing with it. Yeah. Uh, and if council has an objection, they can always refer it to TSO and say, well, we want TSO to weigh in. But yes, I think we should probably take it. Um, and do you think this is something we can deal with today or should we make this an item for the next agenda that people review the attorney's comments and um, be prepared to discuss? What's your thoughts on that? I, I would leave that to the other members. Thoughts of the other members. Do you wanna deal with this now or do you wanna come back to it at the next meeting, uh, 3.26? Um, specific to the uh, attorney's recommendations and what we want to do with them. I think so I'd maybe, yeah, wait. Pat, I'm sorry. I think I would like to um, add it to the next agenda. Okay, so 3.26 next agenda. Um, this Is particular. Right? I mean, that's fine. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, and Mandy, that's it for the memo, correct? Yep. Okay. All right. So we're now going to go back to the other document. And I'm going to share my screen, hopefully. Look, come back here. That's not what I want. <sighs> Sorry. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. All right. All right. Can you all see this? Yes. Thank you. So, hang on. I'm um, scrolling. Okay. It's all right. The next two items. So we are going to come back to 3.26 next meeting. Um, 3.31. These are items that Andy took on. Um, and he was dealing with uh, Mr. Zomek. Um, and we at the moment are um, stuck there. Um, and and those I, are 3.31 and 3.46. 4, 6, that is correct. Okay. Um, and I don't really think there's much Andy can do for us at this point. Um, and uh, I guess it would be really up to me to follow up with Zomek and see um, where we stand. So, I have some emails from him that, I, that Andy has sent me. Um, so I can review those. I was yep. going to say, George, since I'll be following up with him on the AGCOM and CONCOM referrals for the green and dumping, yep. if you send me Andy's email, I can put them all into the same email. Okay. So Dave only gets one email with everything organized. Yeah. Good luck. All right. Send Andy's emails okay, to you, and then you're going to send to to Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one is uh, involving Andy and Rob Mora. Um, and I assume this is his entry done, Re review and clarify language regarding responsible person. Um, I may have to check this with Andy. Um, um, 
And I'm not sure what the, could Mandy help with this? I'm not sure what that is referring to. So maybe this should be on our agenda next time with the language in front of us. And, um, but I don't, you know, I'd have to read section L to see what is going on. That might be similar to what the town attorney already talked about in 3.16, the, the nuisance house one, 3.17 or whatever it is. Yeah, that nuisance house. Because it sounds like, you know, non-monetary penalties, which was something that nuisance house had questions about. So maybe right. that's the reference. I don't know, I'd have to look. Right, so we would have to look at section L um, and the nuisance house legal review, but we can put this on the agenda for next time, 3.49, okay. All right, next item 3.50, uh, zero energy town buildings, quick terminology clarification. Darcy, this is something I sent off to you. I don't know if you've had a chance to think about it or look at it, um, or if you have any thoughts. Um, yeah, um, I, I guess I just need to, um, I, I have already consulted at, at an earlier point before I was on GOL with the members of the Zero Energy Task Force, mm -hmm. and um, they didn't have any problem with the um, the issue around the definitions. They agreed that there was a problem there, um, but I just wanted to double check that there weren't other um, recommendations of the bylaw review committee other than that. I, I sent a question to you and I can't remember what it was, George. Yeah, I think that's two of us. Um, Darcy, the... Um, someone's going to need to clarify the language. Um, and the question is who can do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I just, I guess I had, had to, you know, a lot of the problem around these questions is figuring out what the original language was that was being proposed to be changed yeah. rather than seeing the, you know, the, change proposal mm -hmm. um, so yeah just having the relevant documents to be able to say what okay what. so are you able to access them or you need help finding them um do we have do we have it in our gol documents the the original like the i don't think so um I'm, I, so i can look to find out you need the original um the bylaw committee recommendations, right? right that would right. be like red lines so that you could see what what they were proposing. Yes. Um, and uh, it, I'm sure it exists somewhere. Yes, I agree with you. As to where, I'm not sure. Need red line bylaw committee uh, review recs. Because you want to compare their suggested changes um, and have the people who actually understand this look at it and see if they're happy with it. Yeah, and I, I, I believe they, they will be, um, uh, but I just, you know, it would be exactly. like to have it. Like, so you, but okay. I'm right. <laughs> um, okay. All right, so I need to find that redlined uh, document and get it to, to Darcy for 3.50. Well, it would be good if we had it in general, right? For this whole exercise. Uh, absolutely, and that's, um, may very well have it, but I need to find it. So that'll be the other thing, okay? Good, thank you. We're now into areas that I have not had a chance to do anything about, so I'm not sure. I think um, I need to reach out to the personnel board. Um, so there's a larger conversation around exempting library. This one seems to be a bit complicated. Um, and uh, not quite sure how one approaches the personnel board, except through Paul. The 
The questions seem fairly specific and seem like they could be answered, though discussion may get complicated, but it seems like it's a discussion that would have to be held by the personnel board. And then they would have to get back to us. So I would suggest that, and I'm open to suggestions here, that um, in addition to all the other things that I've been sending Paul, I would have to reach out to Paul. And the chair of the personnel board? Yeah. Um, I mean, that one option for me is just to go directly to them and bypass Paul. But I, I don't think that's that's a, a good idea. But I think that's a good suggestion, Darcy. That that they should be. I could copy them. I guess that's a good strategy. Just uh, send the, the message to Paul and copy the chair of the yeah. personnel board. Okay. All right. Uh, Again, similar problem. Um, this involves human rights director and human rights commission. Um, and what seems to be a big, I always don't like words like big substantive discussion. <laughs> um, it wants this bylaw revisited to clarify the roles of human rights commission and human rights director. Um, again, it sounds like reaching out to Paul and copying the, uh, the head of the human rights, excuse me, copying the human rights director. Not directory, okay. All right, we have two items for Lynn. Lynn's not present. I'm not going to, um, you know, I can reach out to her individually and see if she's made any progress. Um, and then we have a couple items involving Pat. And Pat, I don't know where you are with these, if you want to just talk about them briefly or what help you might need. Um, uh, any, go ahead. I, the EPS phone thing right now, I'm to, totally blanking on, okay. um, but I believe, um, the, the deferment policy, what making that consistent would not be a problem, but I, I do need to go back and I apologize. Um, I wonder if it's used, what Mandy does nicely is she puts the language of the bylaw. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to, if you give me time, not today, but no, 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 of course, meeting, I will have it set up with that. It's a very easy system to follow. Okay. So I understand it's a, a model and it's a good one. Um, so okay. thank you for that. Um, I do apologize because I know I did some work on this and I'm not getting anywhere. Catalyst, go ahead. I, I was just, you know, looking at the comments here about deferment. We modified, did, did we actually modify single use to remove deferment? There's yeah. no deferment anymore. There's no deferment. Yeah. So uh, it can yes. now change even more because of if we're going to consistent, it might just be a removal. I believe it is actually. Um, but. Okay. Okay. And, and, and yeah, I'm sorry, Darcy. Pat, did did I hear you mentioning the Northampton bylaw? No, I did. You did not. Oh, because they just they just uh, passed one too. Might be worth just looking at theirs to see. Well, I think the only issue is deferment. And I think that, um... yeah, I mean, the other things here are not to include administrative section and capitalized defined terms. Right. Yeah, that's an right, easy exactly. thing. That's just not. So if we have this in front of us next time, I think, um, and then Pat, we can just go through it with you. I don't think there's, you know, just having it physically present with yep. this. That would be great. Okay, so that three point two seven. Have it at the next meeting. I that would be great. That'd be great. That'd be great. Okay. Um, Open burning. The uh, one of the things is I did consult with Tim. Let me pull up his email. Um, it's 
Well, hold, hang on one second. Uh, basically, he, he's saying that fire pits and uh, chimeneas are covered by state uh, outdoor open burning law and that it's not necessary to put it in the bylaw. However, my experience since I started looking at this it was an Amherst Neighbors uh, series of things about, I wanna put out a fire pit, what do I have to do? So it is my recommendation that we uh, lift from the state law the exact things about fire pits and chimneys um, and put those in the bylaw. So someone is going to look there before they look at chapter something or other, something or other. And even if the chapter, you know, um, Mass General Law chapter and verse is there, we're still making it harder than just looking at the town website at the bylaw and responding. Um, so I would like to I would like to work that up, and put it together and bring it back for the next time. Okay. Do we know what the rules are? What are the state rules? In you know, I'd have to go online to the, in the Mass General Laws. Sure, sure. Yeah, I have your that. recommendation, Pat, is to take them pretty much or take them. Yeah, uh, complete, I mean, and just insert them in. Right. Just insert the that it's fire pits, chimeneas. What what are the things? Okay. so that residents easily know what the things are, okay. that they don't have to go on the state website to get the information. And the chief's thought is it's already covered by state bylaw but your law, but your thought is let's let's just help the, the residents. So, right, right. Exactly. right. And because yes. the bylaw works as it is, our bylaw works as it is, but after seeing this ongoing days of conversations around fire pits and stuff in Amherst Neighbors, it's not working. I mean, it works for the chief, but it doesn't work okay. um, for residents. Good. So that would so, be my recommendation on that. Um, okay. And yeah, let me get into this and look at the next one. Um, junked vehicles. Pat, you got all the winners here. Fire pits, junk I'm vehicles, uh, and, uh, and foam. Uh, Any uh, thoughts on this one? doesn't yeah. look like they have a time, a, you know, like a, a restriction for months or, you know, time periods when you can't have them. Right. And so one of the things is, what's the difference? And I asked this of the chief, uh, and I, I, what's the difference between a camper that's been dumped there and a camper that is on someone's property parked in their uh, driveway? And that's not a junked vehicle. vehicle. So it really does have to not be drivable, workable, et cetera. Um, oh, and also in terms of the recreational vehicle thing, that's kind of zooped up in there. It's mixed in. I wish I, I apologize. I don't have my notes. That's okay. But your thought is you have some notes on this. Yeah, I have quite, yeah. The, um, he, uh, Scott believes that the, um, recreational vehicle thing works. And I've been, and so he would not change it. Uh, mm -hmm. And what would constitute its use within 300? And basically what use of three in within 300 feet, which is kind of a football field, but he's mm -hmm. saying that gives them leeway to respond to a neighbor's complaint um, of a recreational vehicle being used. So uh, there is a conflation of the two things here. Okay. And again, I will, I, I do promise. Um, okay. So you think that next meeting, you could take us through two, oh, seven, yeah. three, two, seven, three, eight, and four, two. Um, yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Then you're on. We'll be able to make a decision, I believe. Good. That'd be great. Okay. Um, could I Darcy, add something? Darcy, please. I, I just want to correct what I, what I just said, yeah. I just uh, I just Googled the DEP regs and they actually say open burning must be done between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. But that's open burning versus having a fire pit or, yeah. So I, I, I looked it up because I was curious and you, so so our, our open burning is you require a permit and this says um, state law is you may 18 years or older may without a permit set, maintain, or increase a reasonable fire for the purpose of cooking upon various types of land. Yeah. Um, so 
it, in technically it has to be for the purpose of cooking as long as it's within it, it, what does it say it and it has to be um well it does seem that's interesting to me the fire is enclosed within rocks metal or other non-flammable material yeah but i don't see it in i don't see why it has to be related to cooking because i sit outside with my fire pit because of covid uh not now but i was and i will again you're uh, cooking your s'more on it pat ah that's true <laughs> all right you guys you're having too much fun so we're going to stop this we can't have any more fun um so the remainder let me just take a quick scans here um yeah we're almost done with the list so why don't we Mandy, this next item three four four. What, what's your what's your thought here? We we had originally thought of that it would be rescinded when we did the TIF bylaw, but they're right. different, so yep. it remains. Um, so yeah, is there review? a way, Mandy, that we could combine? Could we add what? I don't remember right now specifically what's different, and is there a way of bringing them together so we don't have to have two on the books? Uh, I think they're slightly different. I think the one says we can have TIFs and the other one says something else. So you know, okay. our, right. our TIF is what the contract requirements are and the other one is we're allowed to enter into right. okay. slightly different. I would just leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. No, I'm serious. So your suggestion, Mandy, is that we not send we don't aside to, I'm sorry? We leave, we leave the, the, the done with 3.44 and we make no recommendation on it so i guess that could be a a motion to recommend the council do nothing with the bylaw right that's that's good okay. and there's, so, yeah there's so a we, reason it's there and we should leave it alone yeah okay um does someone want to make a motion to that effect so moved so moving to uh Report Somebody to the council the that I'm sorry, just want to be clear what the motion is. The motion is that we to recommend the council not modify general uh, 3.44 for tax increment finance, but uh, but uh, do not revise but retain, yeah, Simply retain, yeah. but to retain, retain as without is without revision, retain without revision, yeah. okay. So the motion is to not uh, recommend to the council that we not modify 3.44 but retain without revision and a second second thank you mandy any further discussion no <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, i can't see anybody at the moment so i'm just gonna you're gonna have to yell out and somebody just did i think it was pat actually um so i'm gonna go to a vote unless someone objects. Uh, Pat. Aye. Darcy. Yes. Mandy. Aye. The chair is an aye. So we have four, zero, one, abstain uh, to uh, recommend to the council that we not modify 3.44, but retain without revision. Um, the final item is for yours truly, and it's 3.48. And I have not looked at this in, in donkey's years. So maybe we'll just, I'll leave it for next time because we're almost out of time. And I think we've done an excellent job. So I'm going to just leave 3.48 for me to look at and come back to you if I have any brilliant thoughts. But that gets us through at least once uh, all the way through uh, this list of priorities. What I have, and actually we'll go to this in a moment when we talk about future agenda items. So, um, let me see if find my agenda here. We have a set of minutes that I am going to move that they be accepted. Um, there's only one change to be made. Um, my memory is Mandy made a motion um, that in the existing minutes, if you had a chance to look at them, it was unclear to the uh, note taker who the motion maker was, and I'm pretty sure it was Mandy. Um, other than that, I thought they were fine. So I'm going to make a motion to accept the minutes, um, including that slight emendation um, of, what is the date? They are March 3, 2021. Is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. 
We have a motion that's been seconded to accept the minutes of March 3rd, 2021 with that one emendation. Any further discussion? Not hearing any, I'm going to move to a vote. The chair is in a yes. Mandy? Aye. Pat? Aye. Darcy? Yes. And one absent. So again, it's four zero with one absent. The minutes are accepted as amended. I have no items anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance. I can't see at the moment. I'm not smart enough to figure out how to see because I'm still sharing my screen because I'd like to keep this up for a moment. Can anyone see if we have any public present? We have one person present. All right, at this point in the meeting, um, the public is welcome to speak for up to three minutes. Um, they need simply to acknowledge by raising their hand and they can be brought into the meeting. And again, I'm going to need your help, Mandy. Uh, can you see if someone has raised their hand? They have not yet. And they have not, they just left. <laughs> they left the meeting. Okay. Well, that's okay. So we have no public presence. So um, that takes care of uh, public comment item nine. Um, discussion of future agenda items. Um, quickly, we do have, I have sent the stormwater and IDDE uh, bylaws to Paul. Listed discharge, George? I'm sorry? Nothing. Okay. Um, I've sent two bylaws that TSO just reviewed uh, to Paul for KP law review. My thinking was, based on our previous discussions, that we would have the lawyers look at it first before we look at it. Is that acceptable? Good to me. So, yeah, they've been sent off for legal review. I don't know when we'll get them back. I believe we need to act by June. Um, so I will keep an eye on that. But I felt it was made sense to have them look at it before we did. So yeah, if we need to act by June with the two reading requirement, we need to have them probably out of GOL by May. SAP. <laughs> no. If it's going to KP law, they need to go out now. Well, they did. I mean, but again, uh, and I just have to follow up. I, they were sent out immediately uh, to Paul. Um, but as you know, I've not been getting much response from him lately. So um, it's like a dark, it's like a black hole. Um, but they've been sent just for your, just so you know, and we could review them. I could put them on the agenda and we could look at them um, in, in anticipation of the KP law review and then wait for that review to come back to us. And, and so we could put them on the agenda at some point, next meeting or some subsequent meeting, even if we don't have KP law review, um, sort of in anticipation. So that's an option. I don't, I don't think they should be on our agenda right now, I, but I, what I'm saying is that they need, KP law needs to know that we need them and we need them before June because we mm -hmm. won't get them. We right. should I mean, there are, them by mid-April. Yeah, yes. Okay. okay, all right. That gives us time to do our job. Yeah, I think, yeah, good. So out by, we want them back by mid-April. Mid and I can follow up with Paul. Good luck. I know, I mean, I think part of it is just there's so much and, and him, giving him a sense of priorities would be helpful. Um, I agree. And maybe I just need to meet with him directly. That might be this the answer. Um, George? Yes, Darcy. Um, also, Lynn has said that the the um, the moratorium issue is going to be referred probably to GOL, and that that will. I mean, I'm assuming that's probably going to need KP law input also. So, so is I that a, is that a mean by law, Darcy? I'm sorry. Or is it a zoning bylaw? Yes. So it has to go to planning board and CRC before it comes to GOL because hearings have to be held, public hearings would have to be hold, held on them. Good. So this okay, is yeah. Okay. All zoning bylaws require public hearings. Is it a bylaw though? Isn't it? Okay. it saying but does it need legal review first? Uh, in order to so the planning board generally does a legal review the planning department almost all the time has a the Joel Bard review the bylaws during before they're actually before they vote on a recommendation. 
Okay. So, so yeah. they generally come to GOL having already had a legal review by the planning, the, the town attorney that deals with planning and zoning. Okay, so you think that it's going to be like simultaneously referred to CRC and well, it has to be. If it's okay, a, right. Lynn not. apparently no. didn't know that because uh, she said she started out saying that and then she changed it to GOO. Well, um, she gets it anyway, but CRC and the planning board would have to hold public hearings under state law if it's a zoning bylaw change. Right, but the KP law would come first, but I guess that wouldn't be relevant to GOL if it weren't done in GOL, so we don't have to talk about it then. All right, so um, what I'm trying to do briefly before we're done here is just give you a sense of what will be on the agenda for next time. And right now, uh, what I have are a set of bylaws for our review as we did today. Um, and those bylaws are 3.26, 3.49, and then 3.27, 3.38, and 3.42. The last three are Pat's. Um, uh, the others, I think, are either mine or Mandy's. And um, the format that I think is most useful is to have the actual language of the bylaw in front of us, and I will work on that. And I will also work on getting a copy of the bylaw review committee's redlined uh, version, which I, I know Darcy needs and we all need actually. So I will make that my, my task. But at the moment, what we're looking at is continued bylaw review. Um, today, we actually got two of them off our plate, which is great. And hopefully next meeting, we will get a few more. And um, who knows, maybe that's all we'll have to do next time. Okay, that was a joke. Um, any new business? All right, so I am uh, going to call this meeting of GOL uh, to an end and thank all of you for your hard work today. And uh, yeah. we, we will meet again soon. See you later. Take care, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Emily, as always.